Let's start off with this example, MJ16P42, looking at the Haw Pro. We're going to learn about semiconductors. If you haven't watched the video yet, go check out the video on semiconductors, P-type and M-type. That will help you a lot. So we have here a Haw probe, a slice of conducting material as shown. So you got magnetic field going into the probe and the current flowing into the side uh, face of this probe, slice of conductor. Okay. A current is normal to face crazy of the slide, QRZY, and the Hall voltage is this expression. Very nice, they give us this equation, but it's best if you also know where it came from and how to derive it. Okay, say this state, what is represented by the symbol N? Where is N? What is N? So N here is referring to the number density uh, of charge carriers. So you're going to write that down. There's no space to write here. Okay, lah, never mind. We'll write here, number density. Of who? Best to say, of charge carriers. Charge carriers can be holes, which are positive, positive charges. Could be electrons, which are negative charges. If you forgot how this N thing works, right? Go check out the AS video on electricity and current. That will give you a basic understanding of how current is created from charge carriers, like you know, little, little things that move around in the conductor. So this one is just one mark last. If you know what N is. N is a pretty important player in this chapter. So make sure you know what is N and where this equation come from. Okay, the symbol T represents one side of the slice. Use the letters from figure 9.1 to identify T. T, usually we say thickness of the slice. And that will usually be the one parallel to the magnetic field. So that will be this thickness right here. Oh, you know, huh? because of, you see current is coming in through this side. So this is what we usually call the cross-section area where current is flowing through. So then the thickness will be this one, which is parallel to your magnetic field B. The magnetic field still point down, right? So this one is your thickness. Okay, so we have to, what are, label, right? Use the letters to identify T. Oh, okay, let's, let's identify T. Hmm. So there are many T's, there are possible T's. You could say T is PX. You could say T is QY, you could say T is RZ, up to you. Choose one. I'll just write all of them. So now we look at uh, PX or QY or RZ also can. Yeah? So this one, one mark. Okay. In general, the Hall voltage produced in the slice is very, very small. Oh, how small? I'll show you a simulation later. For a slice, of the same dimension, same area, same length, same thickness, with the same current, same magnetic flux density, the Hall voltage in produced in the semiconductor is much, much larger. Why? Suggest? Is it larger? Uh, and explain why. So if you look at the equation that they gave to us, this is a very important tool. They told us that the dimensions are the same. So for two slices, they have the same, what you call this? Okay, let me redraw this big, big a bit. They have the same N, same T. I mean, Q is a constant, E, so that's constant anyway. Wait, 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 same N? Hold on a second. T is dimension. So this one depends on the shape, lah, the cue board dimension, thickness, ma, length, height, all these things, dimension. B and I, they told us they fixed it. Same current, same... Uh, Magnetic flux density. So the only thing left is N. What is N? Number density of charge carrier. So this one is a property of material. The material itself. What is the, 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 the cube made of? What is this slice made of? Material. So that is the main difference between here. A semiconductor. Ayah, semiconductor. Come, come. Semiconductor versus a slice of metal. Just a, a conductor. Just a good old normal one. So you need to explain why, how to talk about N. So the key players here is the variation between the two slices, uh, N and VH. For a semiconductor and for something else as well. So let's write it out. So you need to talk about how semiconductors, semiconductors have a smaller N. Smaller number density of charge carriers. Compared to who? Compared to metals, might as well say. So compared to metals. 
If you're curious to know why, go watch the video on semiconductors or Google search. Or if you're like, oh man, the chemistry is too much for me. Then you just kind of memorize it as a fact. Semiconductors, smaller number density compared to metals like copper or other things. Okay, so what does this tell us? Semiconductor has smaller end, but we want to talk about Hall voltage, right? The Hall voltage produced. So you need to mention what effect does this have on the Hall voltage? So we can say, <laughs> hmm, since, oh, I guess full stop, since the Hall voltage is proportional to 1 over n, or you can say in a sentence, since the Hall voltage is inversely proportional to the number density, so, uh, semiconductors, I'll just write here semicons, <laughs> gives a larger Hall voltage. No more space already. Okay, I write VH here. Lah. Okay, so you have smaller N means larger V. Hall voltage, that's how they can relate. Based on this equation, you can draw out some relationship between variables. So there's two marks here. One, if you know the fact that the semiconductors have smaller n. This is number one. Number two, do you know the relationship between n and Hall voltage, which is what they're asking about? They're asking my why Hall voltage is larger. Ah, so, so you know, oh, because of this relationship, uh, Hall voltage is inversely proportional to 1 over n. There. It's kind of from the equation up here. So if you can squeeze it out of the equation, you'll be good to go. Okay, so just now I mentioned, um, actually how small is this Hall voltage? Ah? Hall voltage in a slice of metal is very small. How small? Let's take a look. So we have this sim, which is unfortunately, I think in German, I cannot, under I cannot read German, but I can, I know kind of what is the buttons. So we're going to hit some of the buttons to get this moving. Currently, there is no current in this slice. So you see there's the current here, there's a negative and there's a positive. This is where the current will be flowing. And they have the Hall probe, which is measured between this top surface and the bottom surface. See, it's connected. See, got a meter up here, got the needle to show the hot voltage. So there's current is now zero. So there are already charge carriers inside here. They're just chilling, they're not doing anything. But the moment I apply a potential difference, I send a current in. Oh, here we go, we have started to move. Okay. So what kind of conductor is this? We'll figure it out later. But what you, I want you to see is pay attention to the reading here on this side. Hall voltage. Look at that. 4.4. What is this? Not milli. Micro volt. That's really, really small. I can. I mean, I can try crank up the current and see how big we can go. 13 micro volt, but it's still on the micro scale. It's really, really small. Like, how are you going to detect something so sensitive? Oh man, this is why it's challenged to use in actual lab because this voltage is really small. Any kind of fluctuation on uh, your reading will be jumping like crazy. Uh, maybe I can crank up the magnetic field. 27 microvolt, but eh, still very small. See what happened to all this charge? Lots of charges collecting on both sides. And the rest are just, you know, kind of just drifting along because no more net force acting on them, pulling them up or down. So eh, it's okay. But yeah, pay attention to how small this thing is and why we take so much pain to make sure the Hall voltage is as big as possible. Okay, let's go on to the next part first and we'll come back to this simulation. In the last part of this question, they say, in some semiconducting materials, electrons are the one responsible for conduction. So it can say like electrons are the one carrying the current. They are the majority charge carriers. But in other semiconducting materials, semi, semi, Holes are the main charge carriers here. So electrons are the, what you call, negative charge carriers. Holes are the positive charge carriers and they move around. They can carry the current. So suggest and explain, double keyword, suggest and explain what? What are we trying to suggest and explain? The difference uh, that conduction by electron or holes will have on the vo Hall voltage. So suggest and explain the difference on the Hall voltage. If it's a... Electron as your charge carrier versus holes as your charge carrier. What's the difference on Hall voltage? Ooh, how to know? Huh? Okay, okay. Let me draw a picture for you down here first. So we are going to draw the N-type and the P-type conductor. So electrons one, you can think of it as the N-type. N for negative. Holes, P-type conductor. 
All right, let's get to drawing. So here's the two slices. One will be, and let's start with N type on one side. So N type, the other one, P type. And I run a current through them in the same direction. So current, uh, exact same value, is going to be running through this way. Goes in, comes out. And also the same amount of current for the other one, P type, goes in, comes out. What is different though, is what charges we will draw later. Now let's add in the magnetic field as well. So I'm going to make it a magnetic field that goes into the page. So imagine everywhere, I won't draw, well, I can draw axes everywhere, sure. But uh, just know that the magnetic field is into the page. So you can use your left hand rule later. Same here also, into the page. Oh, yeah, my body is blocking it. Uh, into the page. And you got X, 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 and X. Okay, what's the difference? In the N type, your uh, charge carrier is electrons. And electrons are moving where again? Your electrons are going to be moving from here this direction right so electrons are moving in the opposite direction to current so if you use your left hand rule and you align okay you point if you take your pointing finger point at the x point into the screen then you stick your middle finger out pointing to the right so to represent the direction of current middle finger your thumb will be pointing upwards which means this electron it's going to be experiencing a force that will pull it upwards. I'm going to pause there. Now we look at the right side. We have, let's say, we are looking at P-type, so we've got holes traveling in, so the positive, positive charge. Let's use a different color to tell ourselves. Positive charge, there we go, coming in. Now if you use your Fleming's left-hand rule, Middle finger still pointing to the right. Current is still pointing to the right. Ma, no change. See, both both left and right also current pointing to the right side. So use your left hand rule. Point your middle to the middle finger to the right. Pointing finger into the screen. Your thumb will be pointing up. Oi, do you notice this interesting thing? Your current is in both cases in the same direction, all pointing to the right. So either how you use your left hand rule, your thumb is always pointing up. But the difference is the perspective. In the N type, we look at this and we say, oh, so the negative charges are all kind of going up. So they are separated and hence the lack of them will be all down there. So this will be all the positive side. Whereas in the P type, if the majority charge carriers are the holes, the, the positive charges, then you look at it, oh, all the positive charges will go up. So then you have the whole row of positive up here. And by the lack of the positives, down there will all be the negatives. Separated. All you know, the charges are separated. The positive go here, negative go there. Wow, you see the difference? You see the difference? Current in the same direction, force is always up. But then depending on who is carrying the current, you will have a different uh, sign on a certain plate. A certain side on the hall probe okay so remember uh, usually in parser they'll tell you oh electrons are moving okay then you know you want to think of this first part n type electrons are the one carrying the charge if they say it's holes or positive charge then you know oh positive charge p type so you think of the perspective of there are a lot of positive charges and these are the ones all deflected up so you see force pointing up current to the right but depending on whose perspective you will have a different Polarity. So the keyword here is polarity. Whether you have holes or electrons as your main stage player, the polarity of the Hall probe will be different. Okay. So how are we gonna de the how are we gonna decide that? Let's write it out. Oh, I need to clear this a little bit. So give me a second. So we need to talk about the left hand rule. How we know where these particles are de uh, deflected to. So the very first thing we're gonna say is that. The magnetic force, I'm going to shortcut and just write the FB. The magnetic force will be in the same direction. And that is uh, thanks to current being always in the same direction if you're comparing two of these semiconductors behind me. Okay, so current in the same direction, force will be in the same direction. So, holes or electrons, they all will deflect in the same direction. Deflect in 
the same direction, whether they are hole or electron. But the difference is, in the n-type or p-type, the majority charge carrier composition is different. So that's what the next point we're going to say. Uh, there are different deflection miles, so you either a hole go up or an electron go up. It depends what you have more, what is your majority charge carrier in your material. So then we say, so the hole voltage, I'm going to shortcut with VH, so the hall voltage will have opposite sides depending on what material it is. Opposite sides because you talk about what the sign of electron and, and holes are. Because electrons are negative and holes are what we call the positive charge. Three marks. First one talks about FB, that is always pointing upwards. Oh, well, not upwards, lah, but always in the same direction. Uh, whether you're a hole or electron, it will still point in the same direction. Like the example down here. And the next one you talk about, so what happens is the effect on VH. Oh, VH will have opposite signs. But depending whether you're N-type or P-type. And so this will be A1. But you also must explain why different signs. Oh, because electrons are negative, holes are positive. So you explain, uh, link I mean, you gotta state the obvious lah. Electron is negative, yes, but what are holes? Positive. Same as Celo. So how do you use a Hall probe usually? Uh? What you will do is in like lab, you take a voltmeter, a very, very sensitive voltmeter with a screen. Then you take one end of the wire, let's say the positive end. And maybe I connect like this to one top part. I take the uh, the other wire, which is yes, usually black color, connect to bottom part. So maybe this one will show positive 4 mu volt. Let's say lah, huh? Then I take the exact same setup here. V. And I still connect the same way. So red goes on top. Black goes on the bottom. So same connection. But then you see, oh, just now positive charge is up there. Negative charge is down there, and we say 4. Okay, it makes sense, lah, because positive to positive, red, red to red, that's what we usually say in labs. Red to red, black to negative. But then now you see red to negative. Huh? So the voltmeter will show a negative reading because you connect the voltmeter backwards, or more like the charges have reversed. So this is how you can check based on the uh, what you would expect and what actually shows up in the lab when you connect your voltmeter there. Okay? So if we go back to the simulation again, uh, this is exactly one of the, not exactly lah, one of the thing that I draw here is either this one or this one, but the setup is same, current flow from left to right, left to right, so this is a positive, come out the negative, but one you think about this, is this simulation an N-type or P-type material? What is the majority charge carrier? So the Car the magnetic field is into the page and you kind of draw it at an angle so into the page lah, basically poking into the the material so let's get this thing flowing get some current flowing in there so current will flow from positive to a negative ends but you see all these things moving the other way right? coming out from the negative so these are actually electrons ah so from here you can already see like hmm well 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 well, well. electrons are Electrons mean that the majority charge carrier, the people moving that cause the current are electrons and this will be a n-type, okay, material. And so you can see like, oh, the negative charges come in here, they separate, they go up. Okay, so they're all going up there. So you can see your nice, um, what you call this, 6 mu volts over here. And that's just the measurement between the top part up here and the bottom part up here. That's why you see this deflection, this little needle there, that's your voltmeter. So go play around this one. Like, I know maybe you don't know German, but you can play, you can rotate, you can try to see how to view this thing, side view, rotation, top view, bottom. Really helpful to help visualize what is happening if drawing on a diagram and moving your hands around don't really help. Okay, so that's all for this question. I will In the next one, we will look at more semiconductors. I really recommend you try those on the list. Because those are really important examples. And of course, we'll come to calculation examples as well in the future. So, see you in the next video. That's all for this one.